Hi students, this is your quick lecture capture for World War II in Europe, our second lecture of the year. World War II was notable for the creation of the military tactic known as the Blitzkrieg or Lightning War, uh, which relied on surprise, speed, and stealth to be effective. Uh, it was first utilized in Poland by Germany uh, in 1939 when German Air Force first bombed the cities of Poland, followed by Germany's panzer or tank units, uh, which used their speed, mobility, and firepower to overcome the Polish resistance. And in less than a month, they had conquered Poland. Uh, technology really changed the face of war in World War II, uh, and this is a theme we'll see repeated throughout, and it is our big idea for this lecture, is the changing role of technology in war. The Battle of the Atlantic was important. Uh, it allow it was a battle between the British and the Germans, uh, specifically the German submarines and the British convoys that were trying to take supplies and troops to France from Britain. Um, you'll notice that there is no uh, date for this battle. It was ongoing throughout the war, with the Germans trying to sink as many convoys as they could, and the British laying mines in the North Atlantic Sea uh, trying to sink as many German submarines as they could because of course uh, if they could contain Britain to the island then they wouldn't be able to assist France. Uh, the other notable part of the Battle of the Atlantic was Alan Turing and the Enigma machine. The Enigma machine was a German coding machine that allowed the Germans to send secret messages uh, without allies being able to quickly decode them. Uh, Alan Turing was a philosopher, mathematician, and code breaker uh, who lived in England and w developed many of the theories that allowed the British to uh, crack the Enigma code and ultimately succeed in the Battle of the Atlantic. Uh, I recommend that you investigate Alan Turing some more online, look into his biography. He's a very interesting scientist uh, and is considered the father of computer science. The Fall of France uh, seven months into the war, in April of 1940, Germany had already occupied Denmark and Norway, and the next month they attacked Belgium, the Netherlands, and France all at once. Uh, Belgium and the Netherlands fell first, with France signing an armistice in June, uh, which they did in the same train car that they had forced the Germans to sign their armistice in during World War I. Uh, so for Hitler, this was a great moment of triumph, showing that he had truly reversed the fate of Germany in World War I. Uh, it was also at this point that Italy declared war on the Allied powers, uh, because they now felt they were safe from French troops, uh, and they would be free to conquer smaller nations that they had uh, political interests in. The Battle of Britain was a fight between the Royal Air Force of Great Britain and the Luftwaffe, or the German Air Force, uh, and it was basically the first time we would see large-scale bombing happening in World War II uh, on major industrial centers. Germany decided to bomb London and the other great British centers of industry to weaken their ability uh, to fight the war now that France was out of it. They were the only major ally left in the West. Uh, however, the British managed to uh, keep the Germans from gaining complete air superiority by using radar stations. Uh, this was the first military application of radar uh, in a major military action, and it allowed the British to use it as an early warning system, uh, which allowed them to more effectively keep the Germans out. Uh, Radar had been around for quite some time, uh, and again, it's another very interesting piece of history if you want to look into the technology with some very interesting personalities. The most notable being Nicholas Tesla, uh, who's known for a variety of things, uh, including claiming to have built a death ray. In 1941, uh, the Balkans were conquered. Uh, remember, that is the area um, near Greece, uh, where Italy had many of its interests. And the North African Front uh, was in a great deal of conflict at this time. This is when Erwin Rommel, the German cavalry and tank specialist, uh, was commanding his troops against Montgomery from Britain and Patton from the United States. 
Uh, this would be an ongoing conflict that would be resolved uh, in the future. Japan was also continuing to expand and slowly working its way towards Pearl Harbor. On December 7, 1941, uh, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor. Uh, the attack was intended to kind of scare the U.S. Uh, into remaining neutral, uh, which was not a very well-conceived plan as it in fact solidified U.S. support for the war, uh, particularly against the Japanese, but also uh, into lending aid to the British and the French. Uh, the Japanese Admiral Yamamoto famously said, I fear all we have done is to awaken a sleeping giant and fill him with a terrible resolve. Uh, and this proved true. Uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor was a major moment in World War II in that it finally brought the U.S. into the war. Uh, first thing America did once it joined the war was to mobilize their economy. Uh, what this means is to take normal manufacturing, such as the manufacture of automobiles, and turn it to war purposes. So instead of producing new Buicks for people, uh, factories were rolling out tanks. Uh, America then participated in the D-Day invasion of northern France. Uh, this was a very successful military operation in which the remaining French army, the British, and the Americans, along with allies, invaded the northern beaches of France. Uh, they did this in one giant push to break through the German defensive lines that had been built along the northern coastlines. And they were ultimately successful, and this led to the liberation of France in the long term uh, over the course of the next year. In Africa, uh, Patton and Montgomery would overtake Rommel and defeat him rather soundly. Uh, and then they would both move into Italy, continuing and opening up a third front. Uh, don't forget that there is a front on the Russian side, so it's the Russians on one side, the Americans and British in the west of France, and then uh, the Americans and the British in Italy as well. Uh, and they defeat Italy and force them out of the war. Mussolini is captured and jailed, uh, and after he is broken out of jail by Nazi sympathizers later, uh, he is recaptured, executed, and hung in the city of Milan. This concludes your quick lecture. Uh, if you have any additional questions, please email me, see me after class, uh, or ask your friends for the notes.